Um, Owen Wilson and I, we went to school together and, um, and we had written a script and we made a, we, we, in fact we thought we were making a feature. We had a few thousand dollars that we'd borrowed from our fathers, uh, 4,000 I think, and we, we shot, we started shooting our movie and it, we ran out of money and we'd only made, we'd only gotten 10 or 12 minutes of the movie, but we just called that a short. And we showed that to some people, we managed to, to get that in the right hands. And um, that was how I got the chance to, to direct a movie. That's what works for me, uh, it was not just writing, I mean, you need to be able to control it so you're not re replaced or something. But, um, but for me, uh, it, was, it was actually, actually shooting something that, um, that made it possible for me to, to um, you know, get a film done. Um, I think Martin Scorsese is probably, you know, when I first started making films, that was my favorite director. Um, make your own industry. Don't pay attention to industry. Do your own thing. I mean, put it this way. Um, you want the work to be seen, but it doesn't have to be at the Odeon. You know, no more. That's all different. That's all gone. It's another ancient world. That type of film, or not even that type of film, the, the, the communal experience is always important. You can make a film on a, a camera the size of that doorknob and still show it to 1,600 people in an audience. It's still a great communal experience. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to cost uh, uh, over 100 million pounds. You know, it's all new. You just break it open. It's, it, it changes cinematography, the art of cinematography. But, but you younger ones, you make a new art. Take what's available, push it, you know, because it's going to go there. You could do anything. Well, since when are you the quitting kind? Only reason I'm here is because three special moments. My first moment was meeting a hotel manager that helped me get the movie made. It's not what you know, it's who you know. He just happened to have a brother that was involved in the movie Hoosiers, which I didn't know. He saw me one day and asked me how the movie was going. This is like eight years into the process. I said, it's not good. Notre Dame just kind of told me no for the final time. In this lifetime, you don't have to prove nothing to nobody except yourself. The movie Rudy was a 10-year battle to get made. It got made because he was sitting in an appointment that got left out, and the mailman comes and Rudy said hello to him. And he says, you know, did you have a bad day? What's going on? And Rudy's like, yeah, I missed an appointment. Well, who are you supposed to meet with? This guy. I actually know where he lives. Whoa, the mailman. The mailman. Of course. The mailman. And they build a relationship quickly. And the guy said, I'm not supposed to do this. But he drove him up to the filmmaker's house, the guy that produced Rudy. And that's how the movie was made. You never know who the treasure map to the treasure is. So treat everybody really good. And it, it will come back to you. I, I promise you. We uh, saved up enough money by doing this corporate documentary to make our first feature film. We spent $65,000 on this movie, and it was a steaming pile of dog diarrhea. And we almost gave up making movies. Um, and I remember looking at him, and he was depressed, and I was just slightly less depressed enough to say, we should get up, we should make a movie like we did when we were kids. But all we had was our parents' video camera. And I said, I'm going to get a tape. You come up with a movie idea, and like we're shooting as soon as I come back. And that $3 movie was our first movie that got into Sundance, and it played at South by Southwest here 12 years ago. And it changed really everything for us, because we realized that um, it really doesn't matter what your movie looks like. If you have a voice, if you have something interesting to say, um, they will like you and they will program you. That an agent is going to sign you and say, I love your movie, I want to pitch you to direct a movie, the cavalry's coming. It's coming. Cavalry's probably not coming, I'm just going to be honest with you. You're going to write this script based upon what I call the Available Material School of Filmmaking, which is not it takes place in a spaceship because you can't do that on a thousand dollars but what you can do is take a meeting with everyone who loves you and everyone who wants to support you and say what do you have that you can lend to me at my disposal to make a film go make this movie on your own 
the cavalry is not coming. Someone's gonna buy it from you. Let them put it out on VOD and a place like Netflix or HBO, and you will probably make anywhere from fifty to five hundred thousand dollars on this movie by the very presence of Randy Hercules and that the movie doesn't suck. You've definitely got your agent beating down your door now saying, Okay, remember last time when I said the cavalry was coming? I, I was wrong that time. But this time, the cavalry is really fucking coming. I can take you out and get you directing jobs. I can get you rewrite jobs. You just gotta go take a bunch of general meetings. And if you do that, you will take meetings for a year and nothing will happen. Because every single project I have made, I've had to self-generate. And it's getting fucking exhausting. And I kinda want the cavalry to come and just offer me some jobs. And it would be really amazing not to work that hard. Um, and this is the really, really hard truth. And the truth is, still, when you're at this place, when I am at this place I am at, the cavalry is not coming. How is it possible that the cavalry is not coming anymore? I've done so much, and the good news of this is, who gives a fuck about the cavalry? Because now you are the cavalry. I'm gonna Tony Robbins you for a second. You are the cavalry, and you do not need them. What did Cronus achieve for you? Well, that movie changed my life because we were more than the underdog, more than the dark horse. We were a movie that nobody wanted to produce. Nobody was supporting except my producers in Mexico. And we suddenly were selected for Cannes. And, and literally, we were all of a sudden one of the most awarded movies in, in Mexican uh, film history. I remember the first time Kronos won the first award, which was a cash award. Before that award, we were in debt for half a million. I won, we won the award and literally, like, like a beauty contest, I was crying, crying in the stage, holding this giant check. <laughs> and, I, and I was trembling and I was really moved because A, I was happy the movie was being recognized and B, I was not going to jail. Please hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos like this.